Well, good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to another segment of Success in Motion, where we discuss topics that will inspire, empower, and promote to catapult you to the next level in your life. I thank you all for taking out the time to join the conference call for those of you who are on the line and for those of you who are watching this video. Fall is almost here, you guys, and I love it when the air becomes crisp and you can feel the coolness and you can turn off the AC and all your fans and open up windows and let that fresh air come on in. It feels really good <laughs> to me, at least, because I really like fall. Anyway, so I will get right into our uh, topic for today. Our topic for today is, are you a display of God's blessings in your life? Hmm. That's a good question. So last week, Thursday, our topic was the process of change and how in our lives, once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it may not be the same as another person's because all of our experiences are different, but the process should definitely cause us to draw closer to God, our Heavenly Father. As we get closer to God, some old bad habits, old ways, uh, old ways of doing things and how we speak and how we perceive things in life should change. Those of us who claim to be believers and followers of Christ should not continue to operate in our old ways. And you know what those ways are. Someone may be listening now and you may be saying, well, you know, God knows my heart. If you don't like what I have to say or if you don't like the things that I do, that's okay because God knows my heart. So it doesn't matter. Well, yes, you're right. But remember as was mentioned in last week's message, the processes of change are acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross, welcoming him and receiving him into your heart as your Lord and Savior and surrendering your will to his. Reading and studying the word of God so you may know the truth which will set you free and that freedom will be from old mindsets, old habits, hurts, traumas, disappointments, and so on. Also, I cannot forget that when you have been filled with Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, he will reveal the ways in which you need to change. Those are the keys to surrender. So yes, God does know our hearts, but when you think on all that Jesus had to go through so that you and I could be saved, why would you still want to do the, the old things or the things that you know are not pleasing unto him? Why would you not want to change? Jesus was lied on. He was spit on. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was beaten. He was nailed to the cross. I mean, can you imagine some, can you just imagine being, some nails being driven into your hands? And I know for uh, those of you men or women who are in construction or who do, who build things, you know, you have to consciously be paying attention so that when you're working with a hammer or when you're working with a drill or something that your hands are out of the way so that you know you don't get that a nail you know stabbed into your hand you don't get stabbed with a nail um last night i just so happened to be watching television and a movie called the eraser was on and vanessa williams was in it and arnold schwarzenegger was in it and one of the scenes was where the, the bad guys were using some type of, um, I don't know, some type of gun that had laser focus that could see 
through walls and things of that nature anyway. And so Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that they had this device and they were in the kitchen, him and Vanessa Williams, and he knocked over the refrigerator. And when he sensed that they were about to shoot, he lifted up the refrigerator door and all these like, they looked like nails to me, started shooting out all over the place. They may have been knives. Anyway, well, it, because he had raised his hand up, you know, some of the, the sharp things got through his hand, like all the way through and I was like oh my gosh so can you imagine that happening to you but yet you're nailed to something Jesus was nailed to a cross and they didn't have the machinery that we have today they actually had a hammer like or a sledgehammer and like you know beat it into his hand can you imagine that feeling I can't anyway so he was nailed on the cross and he was pierced in his side with a spear or a knife he did it all for you and I and what's so interesting is that he allowed all of those things to happen to him and he did not say a word except for it is finished hmm. so I don't know about you but I've been spit on <laughs> I've been falsely accused I've been beaten I've been cussed out and many other things but I've never had to go through those things to save somebody's soul or to save somebody's life you know but have you and if you have, the person that you stood up for, did they continue to show gratitude and appreciation to you for all of their days or just for a short period of time? And then they went on about their life and it was as if nothing ever happened to them. Think about that. So the point that is being made is this. If we are truly grateful and appreciative of all that Jesus went through so that we may be saved, we should want to change from our old ways so that we are pleasing to God because we were created for his purpose and his good pleasure anyway. If we still want to please ourselves in old ways, our thoughts, and the things that we do, then there is yet work that needs to be done on our part. We must pray that not our will, but that God's will be done in our lives so that we become like Jesus in all that we say and do. The world is watching us as believers and followers of Christ to see if we are any different from there and to find out if our God is really real and to be quite honest with you I mean just from my observation and again I'm not holier than thou you know and I'm not exempt from the things that you know we experience in life as humans so I'm not without fault and I'm not without sin but the acknowledging of Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior and thinking about the things that he experienced in order to save my soul like oh my gosh it caused me to want to change at least that's one of the things that caused me to want to change and then I mean most importantly not wanting to grieve Holy Spirit who resides in me not wanting to be disappointing or cause anger or wrath to come upon me for being disobedient to God. Those things are really, really important because as we read and study the word, it gives us instruction on how we are to live our lives out here in the earth. And if we love God like we say we do, if we're also, you know, again, God knows my heart. 
You know, we're constantly using that as a defense mechanism as opposed to truly desiring to be changed so that we can be change agents in the earth that will help to prevent a lot of these occurrences that keep happening, the mass shootings and, you know, the kidnappings and, you know, just somebody walking up to a person who they're just angry and they just slap them or, you know, they're carjacking people. If again, if we care, if we love like we say that we do, if we desire changes in our communities, in our country, in our own personal lives, in the lives of our loved ones, then we must be the ones who change. Somebody has to be the bigger person, if you will. Somebody has to be the one that says, you know what, I give up. I let go because I realize that there has to be something, you know, Lord, that you want me to do. And if I am not set apart from those people, places and things that are being affected by these negative things, then I'm just like that person. But I have to be a person of change. I have to be the person who, when it says to present my body to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, O God, which is my reasonable uh, service. I have to be that change agent. I have to renew my mind. I have to stop listening to certain things, to stop watching certain things, to stop associating with certain people and being in certain places I have to do that so that I can be the change that I would like to see to occur in our world today and for the future because we have for those of you who have children you know and even if you don't have any children the children are our future every generation there's something that's new there's something that's happening and we should be the ones to stand up right now to plant those seeds of righteousness and of holiness so that when those things do occur you know things are already in place prayers have already gone forth god's angels are already on the scene in the future so that when those things occur or come about change is already taking place don't you want to be a change agent? Don't you want to be an ambassador for God? Don't you want to be one who, when you see trouble, you can just call on the name of Jesus and everything must change. The atmosphere must shift. If a person you see is about to do something wrong, when you call on the name of Jesus, he hears you and, and it changes that situation. Do you not want to stand up for holiness and righteousness? Do you not want to stand up so that the world may see that the God that you says that knows your heart can see that God is truly real? Don't you want to be that change? So, again, the world is watching us. The world is watching to see what us Christians and Christ followers are, are doing. You know, are we being hypocrites? Are we being like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and we're saying things? Oh, yeah, we can we can quote scriptures. We can, you know, have the finest of, of this and that. And we can oh, put our noses up in the air and look down on people like, you know, they've done something wrong or they're dirty and they're nasty or whatnot. For those of you who do that. Or are you going to humble yourself? Ask God to forgive you and ask him to literally, seriously, genuinely come into your heart. Now, God knows us anyway, so he knows whether we're sincere when we come to him in prayer or not. He does. But when you when you really get tired of seeing things happen around you, whether it's, you know, people getting killed, babies getting killed, you know, so many different things you can be that change agent as long as you're desiring to change and to change from the way you think the the change from the your perception of how things are and if you have any questions ask God so yes change is a process 
but also changes occur so that we can be more like Jesus because Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection and all that he stands for in us as believers and followers of Christ, those things should be displayed in our life. I thank you all for taking out the time to watch and to listen. Be blessed and make today great. I love you. Bye-bye.